conflicts pertinent to this talk. And I really appreciate this uh, fine group for uh, the work they're doing and uh, the presenters today. This is a white background in America. Um, I think uh, both uh, uh, Lynn manuel Miranda and the Harvard Business School really do believe that in America, immigrants do get the job done. I hope I can share that more today. I have some disclaimers. We're all here to promote new thinking. I think I'm singing to the choir today. This is a very committed group. Um, we've, there's been talk of unconscious and conscious bias, and I hope that nobody, and I don't think this group is engaged in conscious or unconscious conscious denial. I will speak about uh, underrepresented in medicine. I've heard that's actually a newer term instead of underrepresented uh, minorities and uh, uh, U.S. Latino diversity to some degree. I'm just one person. There's so many dimensions of diversity and uh, I will not discuss social determinants of health even though, even though uh, they're really important in all of this. I think it's important to story tell and just to know where I'm coming from. I'm a, uh, the youngest of a uh, family of five boys to an immigrant Mexican father and a mother whose parents were immigrants from Mexico. No education in my father and high school uh, education in my mother. I went to a predominantly African-American high school and uh, played American football. That's my twin brother and I. I'm married to a Caucasian woman and I have mixed children. So that's the perspective I come from. It's important to know. Everybody's been uh, um, seeing this in America and abroad. There's been civil arrest and uh, unrest in America. This is part of the contextual social milieu. Uh, there's issues of border walls, uh, putting up walls and taking them down. Sexual harassment and abuse has brought forth the Me Too movement. We're a sharply divided country in America. And there are hashtags that come about. I look like a surgeon. I am a surgeon también. And also the Be Ethical campaign, which we hope uh, oversees all that. These issues are difficult to discuss. So I think that this group is amazing in putting forth an effort to talk through a lot of this. Uh, years ago, I was asked to give a talk that was somewhat similar, but don't worry, I've made new slides. And Tony Romeo, a shoulder surgeon in the U.S., said to me, Ron, talk about colorblind and cultural competence. I looked it up and, and found that colorblind care is care that's rendered without regard to race. And cultural competence is the ability of providers and organizations to effectively deliver health care services that meet social, cultural, and linguistic needs of patients. So I said, is this really a thing? I went to the literature and found a couple of papers and one says black male patients, and this study was only conducted in men, were significantly more likely to undergo preventative screening tests and agree to a flu shot if they were offered by black male physicians rather than white male physicians. And in another study, African American and Latino patients who perceive racism in the healthcare system are significantly more likely to prefer, prefer physicians of their own race. What about a diverse workforce? These two uh, uh, publications uh, both uh, generally show that improvements on patient-related outcomes are seen in health professionals with culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds, and language concordance is important. The language concordant doctors and health system interventions seem to promote health, as shown by these two publications. We've been involved in uh, research in, uh, uh, in uh, our patients and, uh, and, and possible disparities. Uh, we uh, published in uh, osteoporosis and care of minorities. We published in ACL reconstruction. And we also recently published uh, uh, in shoulder arthroplasty. And we published in several other areas. Uh, but as the window closing on race studies, these two publications, uh, Clinical Orthopedics and Related Research, as well as JAMA, recently have thought through this and think that race cap captures a lifelong society, social experience and residual confounding cannot be eliminated after statistical control for weak proxy measures, such as education level or financial status. You know, I, I gave my own uh, sputum to ancestry.com and at some point in the past, this was what when my makeup was. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm Mexican American and uh, have that culture in my background, but this looked like I was a lot of other things, mainly Spanish and, and uh, uh, you know, indigenous American. But then some years later, then uh, numbers changed and uh, I was uh, more Spanish and even less indigenous American and even more uh, Italian. I guess that's why I like the Italian food. Uh, on to the um, 
And the idea of a Latino Orthopedic Association, there is one in the U.S. at uh, uh, the American Association of Latino Orthopedic Surgeons. I'm a, uh, a member. It represents not only members of Latino descent, but all orthopedists who treat members of Latino and Hispanic communities. It's gaining in membership and acceptance. It's younger than Gladden and Ruth Jackson, the African-American and, and the, the Society for uh, Women Orthopedic Surgeons. Its inception was in 2009. We owe a lot to Ramon Jimenez. Jimenez on the uh, uh, left and uh, uh, Richard Zapanto who's recently passed away on the right. He hired me as my first job out of uh, training before I joined Kaiser Permanente. So this group supports students, tracks uh, uh, um, young interested uh, individuals in orthopedics, has an annual luncheon at our uh, academy, uh, orthopedic academy meeting and is uh, attempting to create linkages to other groups in the US and abroad. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons as well is really looking at this and just some data and numbers for you. Hispanics are close to 60 million or 18.3% of the U.S. population. And in California, where I live, they're 15.5 million or 39% of the uh, population and growing. Uh, they still continue to be 2% of about of orthopedic surgeons in the U.S. as of uh, September 2019 and likely less in leadership. The data on the right shows uh, all underrepresented in, in medicine. This was a January 2021, 12.5 uh, of board, board of directors. I was recently a board of director and termed off. Uh, cabinet advise, advisory board council and committee leadership, 8%, 8.67% in uh, in uh, others of these. Um, so uh, there's the numbers are slightly increasing uh, and this is, uh, uh, these are just the facts. Uh, the um, America, uh, the, the AOS board though has made a really concerted effort and is working with their diversity advisory board and you see there. So they have a focused effort and we're uh, excited to see further changes coming along. So I'm gonna share some data and uh, 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 literature with you at the end here that really talks to um, uh, how we can get things to come along better. And as others have said, uh, this some of this may be repetitive. These are recent publications that look at different, different items to help move people into the uh, roles of orthopedic surgeons from um, uh, um, uh, underrepresented in medicine backgrounds. And it, uh, the very first one looks at uh, uh, letters of recommendation, LORs. And it says that the possible, that the use of a standardized LOR may reduce gender and race-based uh, bias in the narrative uh, uh, assessment of applicants. What about choosing underrepresented in medicine applicants? It's been seen that uh, the colloquially defined fit, we want to fit our program, can act to reinforce implicit biases and allow uh, prejudicial disqualification of applicants that hinders the need needed progress in diversity. However, an understanding of values fit, to fit to the values of, of your uh, residency program and to think about culturally adding to the residency can promote the drive for diversity that ever, others have even pointed out already that's essential to growth and, growth and success of the pro profession. The, the idea of mentors and sponsors, underrepresented in, me, uh, in medicine faculty, ultimately equal underrepresented in medicine residents. From the orthopedic residency program perspective, the greatest perceived barrier to increase in the racial ethnic diversity of residents in their program is lack of underrepresented in medicine faculty. The, an international perspective like today has been put forth by the uh, uh, Carousel of Presidents and uh, an AOA critical issues uh, look, and they put forth a, a a number of initiatives and ideas in this. And you can see the paltry growth of Hispanics, 1.4 per, per decade, 1.4% African Americans as well, uh, in terms of underrepresented in medicine. So more work needs to be done. Talking to orthopedic surgery faculty, there's a lack of diverse faculty, and that shows uh, is shown here. So to address the differences seen in faculty diversity, a concerted effort should be made to recruit and promote a more diverse faculty given similar qualifications and capabilities were proven. And you can see uh, the table that was uh, from this publication shows the uh, small numbers, that even though 17.3% of the U.S. Census Hispanic and Latinos comprised 1.8% uh, 
and of uh, faculty uh, in orthopedic uh, training programs. The you, JBJS uh, uh, recently has come forth in November of 2020 and put forth, and I direct your eyes to the bottom uh, highlighted portion, they're supporting initiatives, initiatives to increase minority representation in orthopedic surgery programs and academic faculty throughout the U.S. and publish data on these efforts, and they look forward to promote greater diversity within their organization as well. I asked them if I could be an editor. That's kind of a joke. Um, uh, so just recently, as, as recent as this week, I saw this and Hispanic groups are really reaching out and saying, what, what is going on in terms of underrepresented minorities, medical students in this? So this was a questionnaire just put out this week. So we're still asking the same questions. So we talked about sponsoring sponsorship earlier. So who lifted me up? My parents, my brothers, my, my wife, my two children. Who has sponsored me? Dr. Fu, I see is on this call. He, uh, Italian Amer Italian Americans, uh, sponsored me in medical school. Uh, J.P. Warner in my my training. Once again, Dr. Fu uh, throughout and further. An Armenian American was my first was the first to hire me, uh, and I've sponsored females, Asians, uh, and Persians, and I'm continuing uh, to uh, mentor others. And I want to direct your attention to me mentor.org. I think that's important to know. Uh, I'm going to end here. Uh, Dr. King, as well as others, have thought about this, and it, we hope that one day we can all be judged by the uh, by not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. And uh, uh, we've heard other thoughts of um, how uh, there's much more that unites us than divides us. We, we all have to be together, but we have to understand our differences and uh, um, find growth among those who don't actually always agree with us. So, in conclusion. Cultural and language concordance are critical for better patient care. Racial disparity and health outcome studies, I think, are revealing, and I would encourage others to be involved in these uh, questions. Hiring is the holy grail. Diverse and underrepresented in medicine residents are aided by underrepresented in medicine attendings. Mentoring, sponsoring is encouraging at all stage is encouraged at all stages, as others have said, and more work is to be done. Thank you very much.